Hi everyone, we are back in the studio today and I'm doing some, some screen printing. I've got a new cassette album planned on Natural Expressions and therefore it's time to start some new artwork. I was playing around with some moray patterns and, and mandalas a few weeks ago. I did a live stream on it just kind of showing the process of uh, printing it. When I printed it, I wasn't um, taken back by it that much but now that I kind of look at it again, I don't know, maybe the ink has had time to kind of settle into the paper, but yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. I've gone with a different type of design. Basically, the whole kind of theme behind this uh, cassette was the environment and obviously uh, the climate crisis. So I've been looking at you know, cloud formations and thinking about ways that I can maybe show atmosphere, I can maybe show things decaying and stuff like that. And I've been wanting to move more into generative art because I'm not that good of an illustrator. So I kind of get turned off from actually kind of like drawing images. Um, I really like the idea of, you know, laying down code or rules or algorithms and then having the computer kind of generate ideas for me. And uh, I've recently discovered Touch Designer. I've been trying to get into processing for a few years. I know nothing about coding and I really don't like the idea of coding. So I've never really kind of stuck with processing. I talked about this when I was doing the live stream for these uh, these other screen prints. Touch design art is incredibly complicated, but it is really cool. And it's free as well, which is you know something really, really important to me because yeah, I'm really only doing this as like a hobby. I'm just trying things out at the moment, just experimenting. You know, I was looking at Rhino and Grasshopper and other types of software that, you know, they're like a thousand pound plus for a lot of these bits of software and it's just really hard to justify spending that money on something that I just want to try out you know I just want to see if I like it the free account that you get with touch design is limited in the resolution but um, I'm actually printing these quite small so the resolution doesn't really matter but basically I'm not sure if you can see that in the in the sunlight you probably can't but this is the the test design that I've got for today one of the things that I really do like about screen printing uh, it's obviously not as easy as just kind of printing your design on an inkjet. I've got different layers and I've got to figure out by putting different layers of ink on top of one another, how is it going to affect the uh, the opaqueness and how are things going to stand out? Because I've got text going on top of white and black and um, I want to get a blue background. I want to get some fluorescence in there as well. So I've got to try and like figure out how I'm going to layer all these inks and that's what I'm doing today. I've got a really nice blue on my computer that I've used for the background of this. Um, I can't find any really nice blue paper that's really nice and vivid. So basically I've got to lay down the uh, the blue background in ink. So today we've got the uh, the permaprint. I've got Aquatone Blue, which is a really nice vivid blue. I'm hoping that I can just mix this and get something close, really nice and vivid as a background. The other thing that I'm going to be testing out as well is, is basically how fine can I go with these dots. I'm always testing how fine I can go with these things. This is a 120T mesh screen, so it's really, really fine mesh. And I've got this particle system as kind of like the, the main image on the, on the cassette sleeve. And basically I'm just wondering how, I mean, these dots are tiny. They're like less than a millimeter across. And it's gonna be interesting to see how they render, basically, when I, when I print it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. If you can hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because I've actually got roadworks going on literally outside this window right here. So uh, yeah, you might hear some noises, you might hear some people speaking. It's kind of annoying because uh, this week I wanted to get the one of the first videos recorded for 2022. And basically all this week I've had to just Put it on hold because it's just too much noise. But I hope everyone's 2022 is going off to a good start. In the UK, we are, I think we're kind of going back to normal now. It looks like everything is going to be opening up pretty soon. We don't have to wear masks and all those type of things. I'm kind of happy that kind of things are going to be going back to normal. I think for someone like me who suffers with, you know, social anxiety and things like that, COVID has kind of been a blessing and also a curse. Obviously, for someone with social anxiety, you know, the government telling you that you don't have to go anywhere and you just have to uh, stay at home <laughs> for a year uh, is bliss, basically. And yeah, coronavirus was like that for me, really. Obviously, it's a curse because it just makes kind of now the things that were normal to you before, uh, like, you know, literally just seeing friends and family and 
going to places, it just makes them yeah, 10 times harder. And this week is kind of like the first week that it's, it's kind of like, you know, dawned on me that you're gonna to have to kind of face all of those things again. And it's been, yeah, it's not been very good. It's been a little bit stressful. But the thing I have to keep on telling myself is that obviously everyone is kind of feeling this in some degree. You know, I know that loads of people are anxious about going back to work and having to like commute. And uh, obviously, yeah, you know, people with mental illnesses as well, they haven't been able to access any of the services, you know, treatment, therapies, and all those type of things. So. I think everyone has kind of suffered from coronavirus in one way or another mentally. And you know, just, there's no rush, don't have to kind of rush back into complete normality in literally a space of like one week. Uh, I think it's just gonna be a case of kind of like, you know, exposure therapy, expose myself to these things slowly over time and building it back up again. But yeah, I'm pretty sure anyone with uh, any sort of mental issues knows how hard it is basically to kind of get back to normal and to kind of push yourself to do things again. Uh, hopefully I've got a squeegee, nope, nope. It's always the case, my designs are always a little bit too wide for my squeegee. Thankfully I can adjust this table now so we can just move things around. So today my partner looks at me, she's got half a day off. So we're gonna to go to a cafe later, which um, yeah, for I'm, I'm pretty sure for most people it's kind of like a normal thing to do, but for me, it's been quite a long time since I've been in a cafe, and you know, little things like that, yeah, they they kind of make me anxious, they make me nervous, I feel uncomfortable in those situations. And I mean, I've always kind of felt uncomfortable in those situations. That's kind of like one of my big anxieties is, is like eating in public restaurants or cafes and those type of things just makes me really, really nervous. So we're gonna, we're gonna go somewhere later on this afternoon and just kind of, yeah, just kind of get back to normal. And it's kind of, it's, I'm kind of looking forward to it in a way because it, you know, I know that it's obviously just kind of like a step in the right direction of a, uh, yeah, basically being a little bit more social. I just finished my usual Monday, which is getting the uh, the video for the show uploaded, doing all of the admin for the Drift Deeper side of things, getting the uh, the mix out to all my Patreon followers and all my YouTube members as well. So we printed the uh, the blue layer. I'm happy with how this come out. The uh, the dots they rendered really nicely on this. Actually, I was actually quite surprised how how well it come out. Um, I did actually use two different types. I used one with a smaller dot and one with a bigger dot because I thought this smaller dot version, it just wasn't going to come through very well, but uh, it has and it looks really, really nice. So we can uh, progress onto the uh, the next layers now. Now, some people have mentioned it on the, uh, the Drift Deeper show. Some of you may have noticed on here, uh, but I've got a new camera. I was using my trusty uh, Lumix G85. I've had this for about five years now. It's really good, the 4K image is very nice on it and uh, the lenses that I've got are really good, especially this uh, Sumilux, this 25mm, this is f1.4 and it's really, really nice. But the issue that I had is that I wanted to improve the quality of the video archives for my shows. Basically, you can't output video and also record at the same time with the G85. I would have kept this because, yeah, the image is very nice. But I've had to upgrade because I do want to improve the uh, the quality of the videos that I'm putting out for the shows because it's kind of like a, it's going to be like a lifelong endeavor of doing these dub techno shows and I, I really do want it to be you know a higher quality audio and also visual experience. So I've uh, upgraded my camera. I've got the uh, the Lumix sticking with Panasonic. I really like Panasonic. I've got the uh, the S5. So this is quite an upgrade. Um, I think it's yeah it's 10 bit 422. It can record internally as opposed to I think this is 4208 bit. Uh, I'm not too sure you can really see that much of a difference when you are viewing it on YouTube. I can tell the difference when I'm editing it, um, but I've had a lot of issues with the files. And this is actually the second time that I'm recording this section of the vlog because I recorded it previously and I recorded it in 10 bit thinking that I could you know, play around with the, the colors and editing it. And Premiere Pro 2022 just hates these files. And I've had so much trouble trying to color grade these things and even trying to get them to, uh, to, to load into Premiere Pro. The colors are just all out of whack. If I apply it a lot, then it just screws up the image completely. So basically I'm just resorting to recording this in 8-bit and not in Vlog. 
basically yeah Premiere Pro it hates S5 files and it hates Vlog and the LUTs just don't work at the moment which is really annoying now I did actually published this video by mistake I think it was on Friday or Saturday uh, and a few of you commented and there was one person who left me a really long response I just want to know if you're watching this again I did read your response and I will try to reply to it in some way maybe I'll screenshot it and then put it on the comment section I'll reply to it that way because I really do appreciate people that respond to these videos especially you know people put a lot of effort this was like three paragraphs of text so it takes a long time to write it out um, and yeah that video i had to put to private because just the, the the video quality of it looked absolutely terrible and i'm quite picky with uh the quality of the stuff that i put out to youtube so it's time to move on to the next layers and i've got to clean a lot of screens today um as you can see it's quite nice and sunny so i thought i'd clean the screens today it's still very very cold outside but at least i'm going to get some sun on my head so let's get started Made some good progress this week i've got three layers down now and i've just got the final remaining black layer to go so i've just gone with a kind of like a silvery gray for this uh, part here that goes over the fluorescent i did try a kind of like a darker gray but it kind of clashed a bit too much and i've got black text going over this section here so i thought i'd kind of switch up the color and make it a little bit more uh, lighter so the black text would just pop out a little bit better. I'm really happy with how these uh, are coming out. The fluorescents look really nice against the blue. I've had quite a lot of registration issues doing this this uh, artwork. For some reason my my paper every single time I pull the squeegee down it just moves up a little bit from my registration points. I usually have two registration points here. I usually have one or two here as well um, and every single time i pull the squeegee down this just moves up a little bit and it's just resulted in me doing so many misprints i have wasted probably about 20 sheets of paper um, and i don't actually think i'm going to have enough to make the 100 cassette sleeves that i wanted uh, so i'm going to have to do the entire run all over again basically start with the blue and do it all again i really can't figure out why it's moving what i've had to do is i've just had to basically every single print just put a little bit of masking tape at the bottom here just to stop it from sliding up a little bit. And that seems to have fixed the issue, but yeah, a bit annoying. But anyway, I think I'll end the vlog here. Thank you for watching. I will leave you with some of my touch designer experiments and some tutorials that I've been following. And also a little snippet of some music from this cassette album. Enjoy your week and I will catch you later.